The first step in every unified data platform is ingesting data from the different source systems. One of the key data sources is often a relational database, such as a Postgres or a SQL Server, where you need to pull data from and load it into your target analytical system, such as Databricks. Due to performance reasons and maybe real-time requirements, you don't want to load the full snapshot of the database multiple times per day. Instead, you often would want to incrementally ingest only the changes from the source database into the target system. In the past, achieving this often meant stitching together multiple different systems such as Debezium, Kafka and so on. But in this hands-on video, I will show you how you can do that very simply using Databricks and Lakeflow Connect. We will build a pipeline in Databricks to ingest all the inserts, updates and deletes from a SQL server into Databricks. First, by doing all the needed configurations on the database site itself and then inside Databricks, we will create this pipeline to incrementally ingest this change data feed and stream it into a Delta table. This video is the second part actually of an end-to-end -end Databricks project where we are building an end-to-end -end data and AI platform for a smart insurance company. If you want to know all the details and all the context around this use case, I would recommend watching the first video in the series where I explain everything and where we will also ingest streaming data into Databricks. Now let's jump right into Databricks and get started. All right, now we are in Databricks and we want to ingest the data, right? Currently, our catalog and schema setup looks like this. We have this Smart Claims Dev catalog, which is our main catalog. And we want to ingest the data in the SQL Server into this browse schema right here. Currently, we have only one table here. This is from the last video. But now we want to ingest three more tables, which currently sit in the SQL Server. This is the claims data, the customer data and the policy data. For this, all we have to do is go over here into the data ingestion tab. And then at the top, you see those Databricks native connectors. And today we are going to use the SQL Server one right here. If you don't see it in your account, you need to enable it in the preview settings of the workspace. And then you can go ahead and click into it. I would say the setup is very straightforward. We need two components of this ingestion pipeline. First of all, we need an ingestion gateway. This is what we are giving a name for right here. Let's call this demo ingestion gateway. There we go. Then we select here the location for the staging ingestion data. So what is this all about, right? So this ingestion gateway, this is the first component of Lakeflow Connect. And this will be the actual compute that is used to connect to the transaction log, to the change data feed from your source database, in this case SQL Server, and it will read from there all the insert, update and delete operations performed on the database, and it will write it into a Unity catalog volume. And this volume location is what we specify here. So if we select our catalog right here, the Smart Claims Dev, for the schema we would select the, the landing schema right here. This is the first part of Lakeflow Connect. The next part is what you see here. This is the ingestion pipeline. And this is what will actually do the upsert operations into our target bronze table, right? So this is a separate pipeline. We have the ingestion gateway, reading in all the transaction logs, all the inserts, updates, deletes, pushing it into a volume. And then we can basically schedule this ingestion pipeline, which will read from this volume and apply all the inserts, updates, deletes into a target delta table. So let's call this demo ingestion pipeline. And here we now need to select a connection, as you can see here. So this is basically a Unity catalog object that we created beforehand, where we specify the host, right, where we want to connect to, as well as the credentials to connect into the target system. Here, we already have this one. If we click into it, we will be routed to the Unity catalog and we will see that we created here this connection, which is a SQL server connection. We provided the URL, the host, the port to connect to, as well as a username and a password to authenticate to that, right? 
All right. So now before we create the pipeline and actually continue, there are a couple of things that needs to happen on the source database side. So we need to enable a few configurations. This is typically done by a database administrator to make sure, first of all, this transaction log is even written by the database and to make sure we can read from it. For this, let's quickly have a look how our database looks like and what we need to enable exactly. All right, now we are in data grip. Data grip is kind of a database IDE. And here we will have a look on our data in the database as well as the configurations that we need to make. First of all, I mentioned we have three different tables that we want to ingest. This is also what you see here on the left-hand side. So I connected to my SQL server, which is hosted on RDS. And we see the three tables here. And if we query them, we can also have a look how they, how they look like. For the customer one, you see we have like the customer ID, a date of birth, and so on and so forth. And the policy also holds some kind of data related to the different policies of the customers. And then the claim data holds the extra information about the different claims performed by the customers. Now to ingest this data with Flakeflow Connect, we need to do a couple of things, as I mentioned. And this is what we're going to do next. First thing we have to do, and by the way, you find all of this also in the Databricks documentation, is to enable the change tracking on the database itself, as well as on all of the tables. For this, we can execute this command. We alter the table, claims def, and we set the change tracking on. In this case, we have already done this in advance. And then for each of the different tables, we are altering them and enable change tracking for claim as well as for the customer table right here. This is the first step. After we have enabled the change tracking, we need to enable CDC as well, again, on the database as well as on each of the different tables. For an RDS SQL Server database, the syntax looks like that. So we execute this command for the database. And then for each of the tables, again, we need to separately enable CDC on the table itself. So we do this for the policy for the claim and also for the customer table. This is already almost it. There is one more step. There is a script provided in the Databricks documentation to set up the DDL capture and the schema evolution on the database. So for this, all we have to do is to click on the database, click on SQL scripts, and then we run a SQL script and here we select the one that we have downloaded from the Databricks documentation. All right, and now we are good to go. So we can switch back to Databricks and here we can continue with the setup of our ingestion pipeline, right? So we specified the catalog here and we specified the connection. We can click on create pipeline and continue. And now what is going to happen? So this will take typically a couple of minutes because in the background now there is a VM set up for the ingestion gateway. So this is the one that will be used now to read from this transaction log from the database from the SQL server using this connection that we have provided and will write it into a volume which will then be picked up by the ingestion pipeline afterwards, right? So here we need to wait a couple of minutes. This is currently not available yet in serverless. So this will be always a classic compute VM. You can also check it in your underlying AWS or Azure account. So let's wait for that and then we can proceed with the next steps. Cool. After a few minutes, you will see something like this. So now we are connected to our SQL server through the ingestion gateway and we basically see an overview of our database of the schema and of the different tables that we have and now we can select which tables we actually want to ingest in this case we want to ingest the claim customer as well as the policy so we select all of them and then we click on next right here now we have to select where to put basically the destination tables. So inside Databricks, we want to put it into this BROS schema right here. So we select save and continue. We see the ingestion pipeline was saved. And now the pipeline configuration is validated. There we go. We are on the very last step. Here we can provide some additional configurations for this ingestion pipeline itself. So here, for example, we can add a schedule so that the ingestion pipeline is executed every hour for example. So again, we have those two parts, right? We have the ingestion gateway, which is running all the time and getting the changes from the source system and putting it into a volume in Databricks. And then we have the ingestion pipeline, which is then using the inserts, updates, deletes from the volume 
and inserting it into a target table in our bronze layer. And this is basically the ingestion pipeline configuration here. We can click on save and run pipeline and then we get directly moved into the Databricks jobs and pipelines UI. And here the job is executed. All right, and there we go. The pipeline is set up as well. And now it basically starts to ingest the data into the three different target tables. You see it's doing this in parallel for the claim customer and policy table. And that is already it. So all three tables have been ingested. So you see there were 13,000 records for the claim table upserted for the customer it were around 7000 and 12000 for the policy now let's check if this is actually true so we go to the catalog and we click on our smart claims dev catalog and first of all inside the landing one we should see something exactly here we see this volume which was created to initially by the ingestion gateway insert a snapshot in this case of the source database so as this was our very first run it did a snapshot right of the source database and now for the next executions it will only track and only insert the recent changes the inserts updates deletes right now we see next to the telematics one that we already had before we see the claim customer and policy tables they're all streaming tables because under the hood the ingestion gateway as well as the ingestion pipeline is running a lake flow declarative pipeline formerly known as dlt Therefore, it also creates streaming tables. And we see the schema here matches the one that we had in the source database. And if we click into the sample data, we can actually see data right here, right? So it all worked. So what we can do now to check if, if also the incremental updates work, because currently it just basically inserted the snapshot, right? But now we are interested in the incremental changes that happened during the day. So what we can do is we can switch back to our data grip. And here we can, for each of the different tables, we can basically execute an insert, an update, and a an delete, and see if it's propagated properly to our target delta tables. Now let's do this, right? So we will insert to the policy, we will insert this record right here. There we go. One row affected. Then we will update from the claim table one of the claims to change the incident severity that is set there. So we execute this one. And as a last step, we will also delete one record from the customer table. So let's delete this one right here. Now we also see one row affected. Now let's switch into Databricks and look into how to ingest now those incremental changes into Databricks. In Databricks, all we have to do now is to execute this ingestion pipeline. Before we do that, let's quickly check here. I prepared a few SQL statements to make sure that we actually apply the changes, right? So if we query the customer, this is the one that we are just deleted in the source system. We see here it still exists. For the claim, we see that if we query that, the severity type is set to total loss. We change that on the source database. And for the policy, we ingested the new record with this policy number. But here in Databricks, it does not exist yet, right? Because we have not yet applied all the changes from the source system. Now, when we execute this pipeline here, we can do this by just starting this pipeline right here. And now it will basically update all the tables based on the most recent changes in our source database. Perfect. Here we already basically see that it worked. We see three changes were recognized. For the claims one, we have an absurd. For the customer one, we see a delete. And for the policy, we also see an absurd. Now, if we re-execute our three statements right here. Now, if we start maybe with the policy one, we see this record was successfully inserted. So it was not there before. For the claims table, we change the severity type here. So if we execute this, we see here the new incident severity that was set to minor damage. And for the customer that we deleted, we should now see no records here. And if we execute this exactly, we see no records returned. So we successfully basically executed all the changes on the source system. Awesome. That is already it. We have implemented successfully an incremental pipeline to 
track, first of all, all the inserts, updates, deletes that happen on the source system. I've provided you all the configurations that you have to do on the source database, in this case, the SQL Server. We have created this ingestion gateway as part of the Lakeflow Connect to read all those changes and to put it into a volume in Databricks. And then also this Lakeflow Connect ingestion pipeline will read all those changes and apply it whenever we execute it to the target systems. So this way now we have a fully functional, high-performant change data capture pipeline. And we have set all of this up within minutes using only Lakeflow Connect within Databricks. And I think this is a super powerful solution right here. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think. And yeah, that was it. I see you in the next video.